Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Menachem Creditor. It is my honor to serve as scholar in residence and rabbi for UJA Federation of New York, where we bring you Torah and music and blessing and community every weekday morning. We've been doing so since March 18th of 2020. Today is April 22nd, 2021. It is broadcast 280, and it has been an honor, a true, true honor to bring together this community for so many beautiful mornings where we begin the day together, we launch into a tremendously beautiful day. And so welcome to all of you. Let's see who's here to wish each other a Boker Tov, a good morning. Good morning to Sharon and Kim, Arlene, Boker Tov. It's great to see you. Hi, Dod Baruch. Nice to see you here today. Donna, Dorinda, see, it's nice. We get to wake up saying hello to familiar names and faces. Felice, missed you too. Welcome back. Hi, Ellen. Penny, my friend. Hi, Blair. Hi, Joy. Hi, Karen. All right. I think we jump right into the blessing. What do you say? Judy, Faye, <laughs> it is. What a treat that my internet works. The, this year we have learned what connectivity means in all sorts of ways. Debbie, Barbara, Debbie, Valerie, good morning, friend. Hi, Susan. Hi, Deborah. All right. Let's get started. We've got Ashlyn and Berkeley in the house. That is nice. And Asheville. Sweet. Robin, Cynthia, Karen, Boker Tove, Linda, Stacy. Hello. All right. Are you ready? Here we go. Good morning, Wendy. Hi, Natalie. You're getting your second vaccine today. Good. Hi, Larry. Hi, Judy. It's good to see you. No side effects, Carl. Awesome. Here we go. faces in Florida. Karen sending love all the way to New Jersey and especially my Abba. Hi Abba, it's good to see you. All right, friends, we've been talking about so many important and heavy topics and I I don't want to um, pretend that any one of them should be less emphasized just because I changed focus on a specific part of this week's Parsha. I want to say that our conversation um, yesterday uh, about justice, and specifically American racial justice, um, is one that is going to be an ongoing fight until there's no need. I had this strange experience. Um, I have a, a Black Lives Matter bracelet that I wear every day, and it's a very powerful reminder, sort of like when I put on my tzitzit in the morning, or my kippah, or, you know, sometimes I, I put my, my wedding ring to the side when I'm sleeping. Every morning when I've been waking up, I put on my kippah, my tzitzit, my, my wedding ring, and my Black Lives Matter bracelet. It broke two days ago, or a few days ago. And, um, and so yesterday and the day before, I, I didn't have the bracelet to put on. And so I, I ordered a new one, and I'm, I'm wearing a new one. I have a few extras for family and friends. And it made me realize, first of all, the privilege, and it, I don't mean it in a happy way, but what it means to live with the choice to put on the bracelet 
and when the bracelet breaks, get a new bracelet. It's a commoditized way of looking at the message, which is to say that until black lives obviously matter, and matter equally in the American justice system, um, it's necessary to, to use this language. And some in the Jewish community are, are were struggling. Some people are struggling with that language because sometimes the black liberation movement, because it isn't... Um, it isn't a tribal Jewish thing, even though there are many Jews of color whose lives overlap the identity of both black and Jewish. Black Lives Matter for some Jews who haven't been acquainted with the efforts and, you know, there's a lot of misrepresentation in the media, think that Black Lives Matter is unfriendly to Jews and an anti-Zionist movement. Nothing could be further from the truth because, number one, Black Lives Matter isn't actually an organized movement. It's a philosophy of civil rights. Why am I starting there? Number one, because that's where my heart is today. Number two, because um, in our work as a Jewish community to make this world a more just place, we need to be able to have the kind of conversation that we uniquely, as a nine o'clock morning Torah community, have been having since last May when George Floyd was murdered, since before that when we've been talking about justice, when we were only dreaming, please God, one day that there would be a vaccine where we talked about equitable and just distribution of health. It is so important for us to be able to take these steps forward and to have the conversation we are having about justice in the name of the Jewish community and with an unfolding vision that begins in the Torah. That's where we start as the framing. Now look directly at this week's Parsha. Because this week we read two Parshiot, Achrimot and Kedoshim, and we've spoken about them a few times. Obviously, because that's how we ground our lives as Jews. We talk Torah. We wake up with Torah. It's a gorgeous thing that we do, and I'm so proud that it has been the thread, the connective thread, for 280 sequential weekday mornings at 9 o'clock. I get to wake up with Torah with all of you. And I feel so blessed. So what does this week talk about? This week says, at the center of it, we, I focused on this yesterday extensively, so I'll mention it briefly as a way of expanding our conversation. The golden rule is in this week's Torah portion. Ve'avta l'arecha kamocha. Love your neighbor as yourself. That means kamocha. Your neighbor is like yourself. I want to read to you some words from Rabbi Yael Rydberg, who is a phenomenal author. She has a piece on this week's, uh, uh, today's, uh, The Times of Israel. She said, What was missing on that fateful day and every day a black person is targeted by police violence is love. At the center of the Holiness Code, which is chapter 19 of the book of Leviticus, this week's Torah portion, is the commandment to love our neighbor as ourselves. The Torah's agenda for the word kamocha, ourselves, is you, kamocha, like you. We must understand that any person whom we think is other is really ourselves. And our behavior towards others must reflect the love that we have and want for ourselves. The great sage Hillel taught that this is the entirety of the Torah. What is hateful to you, do not do to anyone else. This is what Rabbi Rydberg says. Listen to her incredible wisdom. Such revolutionary love, the kind that means the absence of hate, the absence of grudges and vengeance, and with a vision vision of holiness, of being and behavior, would mean the kind of revolutionary justice we are still working towards each and every day. May George Floyd's memory, she says, continue to be a blessing and may justice keep rolling down like mighty waters, righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Amen. Amen to Rabbi Rydberg. Amen to her vision for this world. Amen, amen, amen. Now, part of what I want to expand upon just for a moment is that this week also, also contains verses that have been used in unkind ways and I would say unjust ways because surrounding Leviticus 19 is Leviticus 18 and 20. And you might have seen verses quoted from there about gay men. 
when we face Torah, not only do we amplify the healing power that it brings, we amplify the healing power that we bring in relationship with the Torah. And it is a very proud moment when the Jewish community stands for equality and for love for our LGBTQ community. It is incredibly important for us to be able to focus on the power of love as we learn from the Torah sometimes, so that when we respond to Torah, we respond with the love of the unfolding Jewish tradition that began with Torah. It is incredibly important for us to focus in this way. I want to share with you the way that a teacher of mine faces those two verses, which can show the kind of revolutionary love I think we need to embody in this world as we continue to surge forward with health and with vision and with true care for our neighbors. My teacher, Rabbi Stephen Greenberg, has a practice that he learned from his own life's experience. He, uh, when he was young, realized that he was gay. And he had fallen in love with Orthodox Judaism. And Orthodox Judaism still has many, many miles to travel before LGBTQ youth can feel truly welcome within the world of Orthodoxy, though there have been big strides made by organizations such as JQY and Eshel and Keshet. We'll talk more about them over time. But I want to share with you that when my friend Rabbi Greenberg was aware of his sexuality as a young man. He struggled because of the verses in this week's Torah portion, which we read, by the way, on Yom Kippur afternoon, our holiest day. And so he faced this troubling tradition that seemed to other him. The tradition itself oppressed him. And when you believe in the divinity of the Torah, which he does, that is God's judgment on who, I'll just say I instead of he, on who I am. And for him, as a gay man or a gay young man, a boy, that was incredibly hard. I can't imagine. Just like I can't imagine what it is to have any other skin but my own, I can't imagine what it is to grow up in such a pressurized way, thinking that I'm unworthy because of the way verses are used. So as a young man, on Yom Kippur afternoon, at first he would sit and cry when these verses were read, thinking that he was being called an abomination. God forbid. But that's how he felt, and that's how other people feel sometimes. Treated by tradition or by those who wield tradition as a weapon, treated as an abomination using verses. That can be done, as was done in every faith tradition in colonial America and until the Civil War and beyond when it comes to our notions of racial equality. Just look at the letter from a Birmingham jail by Dr. King to clergy members who tried to slow down the civil rights movement. All right, so we are all involved in this. Back to Rabbi Greenberg. As he grew, instead of sitting and crying when the Yom Kippur reading in the afternoon was happening, Judy, I also remember him telling the story. I will never forget it. As he grew older, his next stage of response to this text when it was read on Yom Kippur afternoon was that he would stand. He would stand up. When the verses were read, he would stand. I am present. He would still, obviously, be emotionally overwhelmed and likely crying, but he would stand. Eventually, and this is something I, I aspire to learn from, his model of heroism and integrity and fervor for Torah led him on Yom Kippur afternoon when these verses were read to get that aliyah, which means to take the honor of standing at the Torah and blessing God. And the tradition is when you stand at the Torah to make that blessing, you hold the wooden base of Torah. And I've always imagined that Steve's knuckles were white as he gripped Torah as if to say, God, I am here. Torah, I am here. I'm not going anywhere and I am not letting you go. You clearly don't know me yet. And maybe I have more to know about you, but we are sticking with this together. We are going to aspire to growth together. 
So in the name of Rabbi Yael Rydberg, in the name of Rabbi Stephen Greenberg, and in the name of our holy community that includes so many different kinds of people, thank God, our skin looks different, our hearts love differently, and we are all in the circle of belonging. No one is an other. And for the parts of our community that have to grow into this kind of revolutionary love, I think our job, if I could be so bold to ask you to take this on, is to grip this world with white knuckles and not let go until there is love in the air that touches everyone equally, access to health and dignity and justice, so that when we can truly look at this verse that says, love your neighbor as yourself, we can say, I do, I do, I do. So friends, I want to bless us with that kind of strength, with the strength to explore the kind of revolutionary love that extends the circles of belonging until we remember that we all belong to each other. Let us remember that. Let us stand tall and strong, knowing, speaking personally, that my eyes only see as much as I see, and I have so much to learn. God gave me one mouth and two ears, and there's a reason I have two of these and one of these, so that I can be quiet once in a while and listen to the lived experience of those around me, because if I want to love my neighbor, I have to learn from them too. Here we go, friends. Have a beautiful day. Cannot wait to see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Let's launch. See you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Bless you all.